We like to acknowledge the Southern Paiute peoples who represent the traditional custodians of the lands upon which this 2016 AIGA conference is being held. We pay our respect to elders past and present and to the spirits of the land. Design culture is not safe for people of color. Design culture shares in the collective guilt of two great injurious transgressions. The first is the theft and dispossession of the indigenous peoples from their homelands. The second is the theft and the enslavement of black peoples to work on those stolen homelands. These and other transgressions against indigenous, black, Hispanic, Asian, and Pacific Islander peoples were by design. Design culture provided and continues to provide the visual imagery that is used to justify these original transgressions and their continued injuries to peoples today. Until design culture acknowledges these transgressions, it is not a safe place. Design culture is guilty. The extent to which we all engage in and perpetuate design culture, we are all guilty. But if we can admit that we have done something wrong, we can make amends and begin the process of healing. Diversity and inclusion is not enough to ensure the sovereignty of peoples negatively affected by colonization. And we can likely agree that minority voices are not acknowledged or not accurately represented through design. Being invited into design culture is to enter a beautiful plantation house on our own ancestors' land, to sit at a table made from our people's broken bodies and blood. Design for social impact is not enough. Design has the power to permeate throughout all of our lives, throughout so many systems, at so many scales. And if those of us who are creating it are relatively the same, the stuff we're making, it's going to be glossing over the nuances of difference that is inherent to our world. Sustainability is not enough. To ensure the continued existence of mineral, water, insect, plant, animal, including human life forms, for their own benefits, not just for their benefit to humans. We need to decolonize from the Eurocentric teaching of design. Doctors Eve Tuck and Kay Wang say decolonization requires the repatriation of land to sovereign native nation. By not being proactive, design instructors inadvertently contribute to an oversimplified understanding of Native peoples. And we will belong to a design culture that will define ourselves as sovereign and have a voice in design. It requires the abolition of contemporary slavery. We will belong to a design culture that sees how our liberty lies in the abolition of a design sharecropping system where wealth is concentrated in the hands of design principles and freelancers work with diminishing returns. It requires the dismantling of the imperial metropole. We will belong to a design culture that redistributes power, resources, and recognition from places like New York to our homes on reservations, towns, suburban enclaves, and the global south. It doesn't embarrass me, but it's very frustrating to have your whole culture basically be looked at as crap. You know, our way of design is always seen as decoration and patterns, and I feel like I can't be taken seriously in the design culture because people don't see Native American thinking as a current and contemporary way to design. We are the ones that get studied like apes and as if we're already extinct, and I don't like that. And I don't like being looked at as if I'm less educated in design if I come from an indigenous background. And the dominant culture is always pushing charity on us and they're making it seem like that we're always in need, but we're not in need. And I hope AIGA acknowledges that and gives us a greater sense and not ask for an award to be helping the poor because we're not poor and we're not pitiful and I'll be damned 
to make me or anyone else look weak in the design culture. We desperately need more comprehensive curriculums for design students. Typically, the teaching of European visual traditions and histories are prioritized over those of other cultures. Occasionally, the visual cultures of indigenous peoples of the Americas are covered, but when they are, it's often just a small section in a textbook or perhaps an optional survey class. Awareness of indigenous visual cultures needs to be a foundational part of all students' education. This isn't Europe. We have creative work going back thousands and thousands of years, and that needs to be recognized and respected. The design culture to which we would belong, could belong. The design culture we can all join is called respectful design. The creation of preferred courses of action that result in situations in which we recognize the mutual intrinsic worth of every human, mineral, flora, fauna, and fungal life. It is the treatment of everyone and everything with dignity and regard. Respectful design is based on Richard Sinnott's definition of respect, Herbert Simon's definition of design, and indigenous principles around the respect and admiration and interdependency that exist amongst all things. We would belong to a culture of respectful design, the outcome of a process of decolonized design. So when you say something like sovereignty, and that really means that visually recognized tribes are independent and they have the rights to own their own membership. So then when you add visual language to sovereignty, you're creating visual sovereignty. And what that means is that each tribe has their own visual elements unique to them and they use it to specify who they are amongst all the other tribes. When I work, I really like to use Lakota symbols to identify that I'm speaking to a Lakota audience and they can recognize it and it's meaningful to them. So Rico, he's the owner of the Trickster Company and he really does the, his traditional form line designs in, from the coastal area up in Alaska. Ryan Redcorn, he's Osage from Oklahoma and he uses his traditional visual languages and he works and he also uses his alphabet which is really wonderful because he's also giving life to the way that they communicate. Douglas Miles, he does the Apache skateboards, and he doesn't necessarily work in his traditional visual language, but he's developed a new visual language to identify Apache. We are showing visual sovereignty. We can all join in the creation of respect for design. We don't have to fear the decolonization of design. It's not required among those who are white to abandon our whiteness, just the assumption that our forms, thoughts, ways of designing are superior and singular because of our white skin and European heritages. It's not required among those of us who are male to abandon our maleness, just the assumption that our forms, thoughts, and ways of designing are superior because of our gender. And it's not required among those of us who are urban to abandon our urbanness just the assumption that our forms, thoughts, and ways of designing are superior because we live in cities. Ceremony empowers me to reclaim the knowledge of my ancestors, to ask those who came before me to inform my practice, and to center and value the marginalized within myself and in our society. The sacred wipil I wear with 3,000-year-old symbols interwoven in its fabric, the sumador with copal I use to cleanse, music, and the murals with indigenous bodies are symbols of my ethnic identity, resistance, and pride. Today we invoke the spirits of our ancestors and our future generations that respectful design may come to pass. We honor Father Sky and Mother Earth. We honor the four cardinal directions. 
and we honor our sacred center. O Matteo.